Do you ever ask yourself, why are you the person you are? With all the things you do, with all the things you care about, with everything that drives you through life. I often ask myself those questions. And when I do, I think of my father. He has this habit of writing daily and weekly to-do lists on those little cards. He writes down his business appointments, he writes down his doctor's appointments, lunch meetings with friends, and all kinds of other reminders. And since he has been obsessed with writing things down, throughout the years, he has given me similar notes. No matter how silly or serious they were, they made a huge impact on me. So today I would like to share with you some of the lessons I learned from my dad and his notes to me. In late August 2001, I was on my way to the airport to start my master's degree at the University of Texas in Arlington. My dad and my mom came to the airport to say their goodbyes. And here is my dad, taking out of his shirt pocket a little piece of paper and handing it to me. Elena, with his serious voice, you're 25 years old. You most probably think you know everything about life. I sure did think that. But your old father would like to give you a list of 10 advices. Promise me that when you get on the plane, you read them. This is my going away gift for you. A piece of paper as a going away gift. Before I tell you more about those 10 pieces of advice, I would like to briefly tell you about my dad. My father was born in a small village in nowadays northern Macedonia. Very, very poor family. He had six siblings, and both his parents did not finish school. My grandfather worked for rich and educated people. And he realized, I have to send my kids to school, otherwise they'll continue living in poverty. So he made the decision that the three youngest kids would continue going to school, and the three oldest ones, the, the, the oldest ones would continue working and supporting the family. So my father, and his two siblings all finished high school, went on to college graduating with honors, and became very successful in their professional fields. So I was not surprised when my father gave me the, two pieces, the first two pieces of advice related to the importance of education. Education has been a significant part of my life. Moving back to Bulgaria after 11 years in the US, I committed to a career of a college professor. I find my role as an educator to continue inspiring my students to strive for better personal and professional development. And I think the advice of my father is very much relevant to all of you college students. You've made the first step, important step, to continue your education. But while doing this, make sure you get the most out of it. Make sure to stay engaged in all of your classes. Start meaningful conversations with your professors and your classmates. Ask many questions. Be curious, be out there, and make sure you, st you continue learning by doing. Join campus clubs, volunteer on campus, and most importantly, apply what you're learning in the classroom. This way, when you're out of college, you already have a very strong resume. You have built lots of personal and professional connections, and you know the importance of applying what you're learning in the classroom. You might find it surprising that I not only share the knowledge I have with my students, but also with elderly people. I was a late child. My parents were in their mid-40s when I was born. My, grand, my grandparents were all, have all passed away before I was born or very soon after I was born. 
So I grew up with kind of being jealous throughout my childhood of my friends who would spend the summers in the countryside with their grandparents. I would come up with even with imaginary stories of how I would care after a cow, a pig, and my mom would give me out and she would say, Elena did not spend the summer in, you know, in a village. She has no grandparents still alive. So it was very natural for me to start volunteering with elderly people. I started teaching computer classes to retirees in Sofia. Those are some of my amazing students, well into their 60s, 70s and 80s. So what I would like to do is to encourage you to find those elderly people in your community and go out there with an open heart and share the knowledge you have. Many of those people are eager to learn. Many of them are very, very lonely. And you can really share the knowledge you have and not forget to be thankful for all the opportunities you've given. Giving back to your community is your way to say thank you. Along the way, I not only volunteered myself, but I made sure to encourage other people to join me, especially those who are younger than me. Those are high school students joining me in teaching computer classes, teaching retirees how to use Facebook, how to use YouTube, how to use an email, maps, you name it. Imagine the level of joy and pride of an elderly person who is able to um, check their first email, to open their first email account, um, who is able to watch the video of their favorite musician on YouTube, who is able to browse through the pictures of their grandkids. Consistent with his first advice of continuing to study later in life, even after retirement, my father signed up for English classes. Then he signed up for computer classes. Here in the picture is my father with his youngest brother in our house in Sofia, sitting in the computer in our living room, browsing some stuff. My father, um, my uncle, has written quite a lot of articles and done a lot of interviews. So he was very, very proud to share with my dad everything he has done. Both of them are in their 80s. And I hear my uncle says to my father, Avram, Avram is my father's name, Avram, Google me up, see what is out there about me. And my father opens Google and then types my uncle's name. Definitely my father has been my role model when it comes to continuing to study. No matter what age we are, there is never a two we're too old for that. There is never such a, such a thing. And because of being eager, eager to continue studying, my father was also impressed of me using my cell phone, my smartphone, quite a lot. He came to me and he said, Elena, I want to be smart too. He went on late in his 80s and got himself a smartphone. Now he's checking his email from the bedroom in the morning, lying in bed calling my brother in California over Viber and accidentally taking such cute selfies whenever <laughs> browsing through his phone is just a joy. So I end up saving some, some of them for my uh, own pleasure and my own love. I asked my father once, what made the difference to him for staying in school? He had a tough life. He didn't have to stay in school. Many, you know, many did not continue, did not graduate. Many dropped out, many kids from poor families. He told me it was his Bulgarian language middle school teacher. She knew my dad's situation. She knew he comes from a very poor immigrant family. She knew the parents at home could not provide any support with homeworks or anything else. So she made sure to work with him one-on-one -on -one after classes so he doesn't feel discouraged. She made sure she is examining him in private so he doesn't feel embarrassed in front of his classmates. So his teacher made the difference to him. A teacher can make a difference to any child's life. It made a difference in my father's life, and ultimately it made a difference to my personal life. 
And I know many students are looking into careers of business consultants, of programmers, journalists. But which of you will be our future teachers? Because of growing up knowing the value of education, I spent the last 10 years working with organizations in Bulgaria, ensuring the top level of education and equal access to high level of education for all Bulgarian kids. No matter what family they come from, no matter how much money their parents make, no matter where they live, no matter what school they go to, Every child deserves the best possible education. Trying to work with children in different organizations has really provided me the, the giving back attitude. I was very fortunate to grow in a household where education was provided to me. I did not take anything for granted because I know not all children around the world are as fortunate as I was. Some children grow up without parents, some live in poverty, others live in war zones, and all they wish for is a chance for a better life. The life that I had, but by no means I deserved more than them. Another lesson I learned from my father is about the struggles of immigrants and refugees. I learned that no person's potential depends on where they come from. And I saw that from my personal journey from Bulgaria to the US. I met lots of lots of strangers who opened their houses to me and welcomed me with love and care. And I told myself, I have to do the same for others. I cannot turn my head away when people need me. My father, he talks a lot, and he mostly tells me jokes. So I sometimes find it hard to see the serious point of him. But he told me that, Elena, you have to make sure that you find the people in your life who would be there for you when you need them, you will be there when, you, when they need you, and make sure your friends are people who are not selfish, envious, and negative. Make sure you keep your smile on and make sure you're there to help your community. And it may sound very generic and very kind of, okay, blah, blah, but I do think about those things every day. Why I was so fortunate to grow up in that family, to have the parents I had, to have the education I had, while other kids were not as fortunate as me. As me. I should not take this for granted. And in my life, with all the work I do, I make sure to show people how much I appreciate the opportunities I've had. My father will be 90 in December this year. 90, zero, nine, zero. God willing, universe willing. Another lesson I've learned from him is the importance of a balanced life, of a work-life balance. Here he is on the beach. Every morning he would do a slow run, then do some squats and then go for a cappuccino, and then take a nap, and finally finish the day off with a mojito. Then, at home, he does weights every morning. I've showed him how to do it. Uh, he takes the stairs to the seventh floor of our apartment building, and until very recently, he used to go on regular hikes. So I've listened to his advice. I work very hard. I have a very busy calendar but I always make sure to find time to rest. I always find time to go for a yoga class, for a yoga practice, go for a hike, get enough sleep. And I know all of you are very, very busy, but I think it's important for me to send you the message that you have to find that balance in your life. You have to find the balance between work, school, your friends, your family, sport activities, and anything that will bring you calmness and enjoyment. Please do not remember the importance of keeping your sanity. Work-life balance is the key. The final thing I'm going to finish off today is one additional note my dad left me. 
It's the note for my 40th birthday on a little piece of paper saying happy birthday, wishing you lots of health and success, and be wise when advancing through forward. This was the note for my 40th birthday on a little piece of paper. I learned that I should appreciate the important things, and I should find joy in the small things, like my father remembering my birthday, even though it's on a small piece of paper. So to wrap up my, my conversation today, my talk for you guys today, I've learned to have my own little notes to share with people around, and I would like to summarize for you the main lessons that I've learned from my father and his advice to me. Education is very important, and every person has huge potential no matter what their background is. Working hard and being con con consistent is the key, but don't forget to take care of yourself and enjoy life. Along the way, create and cherish great friendships, give back as much as you could, and do not waste the gift of life. Hustle every day, don't turn your head away from those in need, be the change you want to see in the world, and don't wait. Start today. Thank you very much. <laughs>